Today, we're going to talk about vitamin D dangers, which is very different than vitamin D toxicity. They're not the same. It's extremely rare to develop a vitamin D toxicity, which really involves only one symptom. That's too much calcium in the blood. I talked to Professor Bruce Hollis, who is the pioneer in vitamin D research, and asked him, have you ever seen a vitamin D toxicity problem. And he told me never. And he was involved with many vitamin D studies. You would have to consume hundreds of thousands of international units of vitamin D3 for months to develop any toxicity. And a lot of times people are afraid of even 10,000 international units. It sounds like a very large number. But I want to show you something right here. See this book right here? This book is called The Pharmacological Basis of Therapeutics and I want to read something on page 1687. The maintenance dose usually ranges between 50,000 and 250,000 units daily. A few years later, if you look at the textbooks, it's down to between 400 and 600 IUs. Maybe it just worked too well and they had to take it out. I have no idea. In order for vitamin D to work, it's dependent on magnesium. If you have a magnesium deficiency and you take a lot of vitamin D, you are going to exaggerate that deficiency because the more vitamin D you take, the more magnesium you need. Both of them synergistically work together. Even if we think about the main problem with vitamin D toxicity, which is too much calcium in the blood, take a look at this research paper right here. Magnesium prevents vascular calcification. Magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. Too much calcium can cause clots. And guess what? Magnesium helps to control that process. Number two, zinc. The vitamin D receptor is dependent on zinc. When you start taking vitamin D and you're slightly zinc deficient, that deficiency can be exaggerated because the requirement of zinc goes up when you take more vitamin D3. What are the symptoms of a zinc deficiency? Your taste is not quite right or your smell. You may get acne or flaky skin or even lower amounts of testosterone because zinc is needed to build up testosterone. Vitamin K2. This is another one you should take. What does vitamin K2 do? Helps to prevent the buildup of calcium. The other function is to drive this calcium into the bone and the teeth. The last nutrient cofactor for vitamin D3 is vitamin A. I'm talking about the active form of vitamin A called retinol. The receptors for vitamin A actually sometimes bind with vitamin D receptors as a complex. They both work together. If one of them is lacking, the other one won't work optimally. Vitamin A also helps keep calcium out of your arteries. If you become deficient in vitamin A, you're going to notice that it's hard to see in the dark at night. You potentially can have dry eyes, dry skin, lowered immune system, maybe even some acne. I'm going to bring up three additional things on this topic. Number one, I always recommend to take vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. It's not as potent. It's made synthetically. I would avoid it. And I would definitely avoid taking any synthetic vitamin D3. You want to get a natural source of vitamin D3. And lastly, many manufacturers, when they make their vitamin D, have hidden maltodextrin or they might put in glucose syrup. They put the starch as a filler. They use it because it's a very cheap ingredient. And most companies that sell vitamin D3 use these fillers. There's a very simple way you can test this. You open up the capsule, mix it in some water, okay? Add a few drops of iodine. And if it turns dark purple, suspect a starch. This is called the starch test. And you can detect hidden maltodextrin and other starches in your supplements. If it doesn't have it in there, it'll just turn yellow or just slightly clear. Let's go back to magnesium. What are the foods high in magnesium? Anything leafy green, because green is chlorophyll, and at the heart of chlorophyll, you have magnesium. Also, you can get magnesium in chocolate. Just get the one that doesn't have the sugar if you're gonna do chocolate. And also, magnesium is in certain nuts, but I would be careful about consuming too many nuts. Pumpkin seeds have a lot of magnesium. And if you were gonna take a supplement, I would take magnesium glycinate. Magnesium glycinate is easily absorbed, and I would take 800 or more. I've known people who needed to up the magnesium like 24 100 milligrams to get rid of their cramps. Zinc, where do you get zinc from? Red meat, shellfish are two very good sources. And if you're gonna take zinc as a supplement, make sure it's also in a blend of other trace minerals. 
just to make sure that you don't create a copper deficiency if you take it over a long period of time. Vitamin K2. Let's say, for example, you're doing 10,000 IUs of D3. Then I would recommend you take 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 for every 10,000 international units of vitamin D3. And the version of K2 I would take would be MK7. You can get it from high quality grass-fed butter, kimchi, sauerkraut, consuming grass-fed beef, eggs. And then we get to vitamin A. Vitamin A is not beta carotene. Beta carotene is in like plants, vegetables. Don't try to get your vitamin A from vegetables. It's not gonna work. I highly recommend you try to get your vitamin A not from a pill, but from food, egg yolks, liver. But my favorite source is cod liver oil. Why? Because cod liver oil not only has the omega-3 fatty acids, but it also has a nice balanced blend of vitamin A and vitamin D together. Since I did mention the word vitamin toxicity, if you haven't seen this video, you should check it out. I put it up right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book, um, more extensive, called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here, called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just wanna clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.